Welcome back. In this video, we're going to tackle step two of the Math 033 Project 2, Yummy Graphs. At this point, you've already taken a picture of your candy arranged in the form of bar charts. So you have some idea of the data that you'll be using. But now we need to open up Microsoft Excel on your computer, Microsoft Excel could be in a couple of different places. The probably the most likely place is somewhere down here on the along the um, menu bar down at the bottom of the screen. If you're using a Microsoft, excuse me, if, a, if you're using a PC or if you're using a Mac, uh, there are versions of this bar down at the bottom. And you'll notice I've already got a, a window open for Microsoft Excel. But if you don't, then clicking on the start icon and just typing in Excel, E-X-C-E-L, should bring up whatever version of Microsoft Excel you have on that particular computer. On this particular one, I've got Microsoft Excel 2010. There are newer versions, there are older versions, most of what we're going to be doing is very, very similar uh, across all the versions of Microsoft Excel that you could be using. So when you click on Microsoft Excel, it should open up a window that looks something like this. This is what's called a worksheet. Um, the worksheet itself has columns, A, B, C, D, all the way through whatever you can imagine. And at the same time, it also has rows, one, two, three, four, all the way down like that. And so every single spot inside the uh, worksheet is a cell, what's called a cell in Microsoft. And so each one of these cells has a location. It has a column. In this case, it's column G and a row three. So this cell right here is called G3. And that comes in handy later for being able to write formulas and things like that. But the nice thing about this is that you can type whatever you want inside the cells. And they don't have to make sense, right? So for example, I'm just typing a bunch of gobbledygook inside the cells. So if you've used Excel before, then you know what it's really useful for is computation and calculation and making sense of numbers. But you could treat this like a Word document. So for example, if I highlight all these and hit delete, I can delete those and I could just start, start typing. The story of my life starts with, and then I can write and type and pretend like this is a word processor, but that's not really what Microsoft Excel is good for. What Microsoft Excel is really good for is being able to take a series of numbers. So for example, I'm just going to go over here into cell C2 and I'm going to type a number, 23. And then for C3, I'm going to type another number, 34. And what I can do now below that in cell C4 is say, I want to add these two numbers up and put the result right here. And so in cell C4, I can type in equals. And now if I wanted to, I could type in equals 23 plus 34. And Microsoft Excel will do the arithmetic and tell me what the answer is. But notice, if I click on the cell, I can actually see the formula up here in the formula bar. It tells me what it's doing to create the result. And so when I hit enter and go off of it, the result sits out for everybody to see. But if I click on the cell, I can actually tell what's going on. The real genius of the spreadsheet, though, is not that it can do 23 plus 34. It's that if I delete inside the, the formula bar, if I name the particular cell, for example, this guy, the 23 was C2. So if I say, take C2 and add it plus C3. You'll notice that both C2 and C3 are highlighted. C2 is highlighted in blue, C3 is highlighted in green. And so the formula for C4 says take those two cells and add them together. So when I hit enter, I get the same result. Now, this isn't all that impressive because it's just addition, but what's really cool about Excel is that I can go back in, in here and say, oh, you know, I didn't mean for it to be 23 plus 34. I meant it to be 33 plus 34. And when I hit enter, watch what happens in cell C4. That 
total changed automatically. And so the genius of the spreadsheet is that it allows you to, in a way, program this works worksheet, this space, to do whatever kind of calculations you want it to do. And so that's what we're going to be doing with this project. So I'm going to delete this stuff here, and we're going to take a look at the project itself and make some sense of what's going on. So in step two, you'll see uh, it asks us to open a Microsoft Excel document on the computer and remember to save your file as often as, or excuse me, often as you work, which I completely forgot to do. So I'm actually going to save this file. I'm going to go in here into file and say save, boop. And I can just save it to my desktop or wherever, just so long as I go in and save it once in a while so I don't forget things. So it says label the worksheet tab in your Excel workbook as photos. So we're going to make a tab and, and call it photos. So I'm going to go back to my Excel file here and I'm going to go down here. Notice the, the little tab that says sheet one. I'm going to change it from sheet one just by double clicking. If I double click, I can type the name of whatever I want it to be. And I want this one to be photos. And if I hit enter, I've just named this worksheet right here that I was working in. Right next to it, you'll notice there's a insert worksheet, right? I can click on that and add another tab. In a way, I'm adding another worksheet to this entire file. So what does it ask us to do next here? It says, uh, within that worksheet, import your candy photographs. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my file here and just having the cursor somewhere inside that worksheet, I'm going to go up here into insert and then picture. And so I'm going to insert a picture from file. And you'll notice right away, it just kind of opens up the, okay, where's my file at? Now I've already taken some pictures of some candy and saved them to my desktop. Now you are going to do this in whatever manner you can. If that means taking a picture with your phone and then emailing it to yourself or texting it to yourself and then opening it up on your computer, you can do that. If you want, you can take a picture with your phone and um, send it to your instructor if that's what they want you to do. Or if you want to just take a picture with your instructor in class uh, and they can send you an email of the uh, photograph itself. So I just happen to have mine on the, the desktop here, or I thought I did, maybe it's under downloads. Oh, they're there. And I've got two images of some Skittles that I grabbed. So here's my image, uh, this first image. I'm just gonna double click on that and you'll notice it droop, pulls it right in. Now this is a really big image file, right? So all I'm gonna do is grab the corner of this image and slowly just kind of drag it in and change the size. And you'll notice I can drag this thing over and change the size, but by kind of adjusting the, grabbing the corner and adjusting it, pulling it down, I've basically made this image a little bit easier to manipulate. So I now have an image of my, I guess, smaller candy bag in place. And so all I need to do now is import the other image. Use the same procedure, go to picture, and you'll notice it stayed in my downloads folder. And I click on this other image and again, adjust the size of the file, adjust the size of the image. I don't need it to be huge. I now have a picture of the candy package, the candy uh, for both my small and my large bags. So that's it for my photos bag. I don't really have to do anything else. This is, again, just showing that you have your data collected and it's visible. And you have an idea of each one of these um, kind of works as sort of a bar chart. So you can see this, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six different types of candy or different flavors of candy. And this one has uh, the same five colors as well. So the next... Uh, the next part says, label another worksheet in your Excel workbook as data and graphs. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go back to our, uh, our Excel file. We're going to insert another workbook down here in the, the bottom of the page. And we're going to name this 
data and graphs again you just hit enter and it names that particular tab and I can go back to my photos if I want or go back to my data and graphs just by clicking on it so you'll notice here that now that we've got our photos and our data and graphs tabs we're going to create a three column table for each candy package the columns will be color frequency and relative frequency so in our data and graphs we're going to create a three column table and each one of these uh, columns is named back here you'll notice color frequency and relative frequency so we just type in color and then I can move the cursor over by using an arrow or I can hit tab frequency was the next one and then relative frequency and so you'll notice that if the, the um, columns are not wide enough then the text will just kind of bleed over into the next column you can adjust the width of the column by hovering the cursor up here right in between the columns and just moving the cursor over like this the other way to do this is to hold your mouse or hold your the cursor so that it's just between the two and you see that symbol and then you double click double click you know, click with the left mouse button and you'll see it jumps right to the width that it needs to be kind of the perfect width for whatever uh, you're doing there so I'm going to actually make this uh, fill in this column or fill in this table and create the other table for my uh, other graph and then I'll see you back in the next video and that'll give you a chance to kind of hit the pause and go in and make your own color frequency and relative frequency tables on your own.